conversations, cocktails, and connections. I'm Amy Hester. And I am Emily Reeves. Welcome to our um, cocktail hour. Cocktail hour, happy hour, Mm -hmm. um, where we're always making something new, and tonight is no different. No different at all. I will be honest, I looked specifically for recipes that would call for cognac, because we bought the Hennessy for a drink that we made a few episodes ago, yeah. and I was like, I've never had to buy this before, so the chances of me, like, and yeah. I really don't ever encounter it in cocktail recipes that much when I'm looking, so I'm like, I'm going to try to find a cocktail recipe specifically yeah. with this, so we can make use of it. So, I found one that's called the St. Jacques District. Um, I don't know the origin of that <laughs> store, of the name, like, what the background of the yes. drink is, but it sounded tasty because it has the cognac, it has grenadine. Ooh, has, we haven't made anything with grenadine. I know, we had to go get some. Uh, Cointreau <laughs> and orange bitters and uh, lemon juice. So it's kind of, it's got a lot of um, citrusy things happening. So the grenadine reminds me of my waiting table days. <laughs> <laughs> of like topping things off with grenadine at the bar or, um, I was not a bartender. Um, or like making Shirley Temples. <laughs> I mean, I didn't make a lot of Shirley Temples. It's just like if some kid was like, can I have some strawberry or whatever what is it it's a uh, rose okay rose sorry rose well i don't know I think it's like it just cherry it's roses roses products is it, not cherry? it doesn't say what the flavor is i thought it was like cherry it's not rose rose okay. is the brand clearly <laughs> well, i don't you... think it's cherry flavored though. okay i think it's just red <laughs> <laughs> it's just coloring Okay, we could dye well, our, we could maybe dye our ends of our hair with this. Product. So uh, as usual, we've done a lot of research so that we can explain <laughs> to you all of the things that go into making well, these cocktails. When you were talking about the name of the, we before we t- mm-hmm. before we started, Emily was like, "Here's what we're gonna make," and I'm like, "Oh, where's that from? Is that like New Orleans?" And she's like, "No, it might be Canada." And we're like, "Okay, we should." I don't know. We should. We don't know. That. <laughs> so we did. We mentioned bloopers. <laughs> All right, so let's get started, and then we'll talk a little bit about our next guest yes. for this episode. Um, okay, so we're going to mix everything up in a cocktail shaker, and uh, then pour it over ice. I think we're supposed to pour it into chilled glasses, which I did not plan enough ahead, so we're just putting it over ice. Um, so I'm going to start with the uh, cognac and pour that in. Okay, okay. St. <laughs> Jacques District. So it calls for two ounces of cognac. So we double everything around here, as we know. So we'll be putting four ounces in. But a single is You know, the surprising part when we did make our last um, cognac cocktail, we did actually like it. We did. I can't even remember what it was. I can't either. But I remember I was nervous about it. (laughs) Yeah. Because it was just so the unknown of it. And, yeah. All right. It's a half ounce of Cointreau. So we'll put in Orange one ounce for our doublings. My doublings. Um, it is a half ounce of grenadine. Who knows what the flavor is on that? <laughs> I swear it's cherry. <laughs> Maybe, but that's a, that's a weird flavoring to go with orange lemon and um, you know orange and lemon. So I don't know. It looks Man. like cough syrup. Is what it looks like. <laughs> I'm telling you, you a kid would like you would pour that on a sprite. I was trying to look to see if it needed to be refrigerated after opening, and it doesn't nah. say. So I'm it's guessing it's usually at the gonna... bar, just sitting there, like getting syrupy <laughs> grossness all around the edges. All right, half ounce of lemon juice. So we're, putting... but not in our house. Her house or mine? Hopefully not. Okay, and then we've got two dashes of the orange bitters. So one. Bringing two, out the bitters. Three, four. Okay. And then we're going to put ice in there, shake it up, and strain it into our glasses. Is that okay? um, look how cute this is. Getting the orange swirl. Yes. We're getting ready for a jack-o'-lantern. Okay, so you know what? Because of the time of the year right now, Kroger, my favorite time is when they put the um, caramel apples out. I've never even seen those. Oh, my God. Kroger always. To be fair, Matthew does the grocery shopping at our house. (laughs) Carameled apples with nuts on them. This time of year is my favorite, and I always get some from Kroger. That's so interesting. Mm -hmm. I would have never guessed that about you. At the fair, so if I ever went to the fair, which they're not having the fair this year, 
You know what, though? I wonder if they will do the fair food at Barton Con- You know, like, mm-hmm. have... Like, to go or whatever? Yeah. Anyway. I don't know. I, if I ever went to a fair, fun place, like the fair, I would always get a caramel apple to go and take it home, and I'd devour it. Like, cut it into little cubes or whatever. Okay. It's very red. It is. <laughs> I think that's the whole point of the grenadine. Yeah. Um, I can smell it. Those are beautiful. I'm trying to little to orange make, worms. Make them a little bit prettier. Um, and there's still some left in our mixing cup. Oh, well, that's good. If we like it. <laughs> All right. Okay. Cheers. Has there been anything oh that we haven't really liked? Mm-hmm. I don't know about this one. <laughs> that was that was. <laughs> it tastes a little medicine-y. It's the grenadine. You think it is? Ugh. You think it's the grenadine? Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's got like an aftertaste, like a cough syrupy aftertaste. Yeah. And I know we like all these other things. This is the only new thing we've added, so maybe. It's, I mean. It's making me make my weird bitter face. Or, mm. Bitter beer face? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> I mean, I don't love it, but I'm probably still going to drink it. I probably will, too. I'm not going to ask for a new drink. <laughs> well, bartender might get pissed. <laughs> this, is the only thing, have, this is the only thing the bartender prepared for. <laughs> it does have an... It, like, the aftertaste lingers, and it's not cognac. No, it's not. It is totally... I mean, it's got to be this. Grenadine. It not. smells like a... Um, it's, I mean, this even smells like cough syrup. It's almost it's like you poured... A melted popsicle. Yeah, but it's got like a little bit, bit of a bitter, bitter taste to it. I mean, oh, well, I'm keep drinking you know it what? So can numb How my taste freaking buds. weird was that? I just say, is there been any drink that we don't like? Well, I mean, I think you you kind of um, okay. jinxed it. Sorry. But we didn't love. There's been some other things that we didn't love. There's a thing we made with the like white Russian. Well, you didn't love the white Russian. I love a white Russian. But then um, we made that thing with the super ginger beer, like mm. it was like su- like super gingery, and um, that was my fault, because I bought the stupid worst ginger beer ever. It was a good looking bottle. Yeah, it was cute. So we didn't like that. Then there was something else that we didn't love. I'd have to look back. Like I've started a database, y'all. Like we're at the point in our show yeah. now where we're I have, have a database a of guests we're and cocktails because. We've got so many. I need to make notes on whether we like the cocktails or not now. <laughs> You'd think we would just remember, but we're at that point where we can't. So today's guest is, <laughs> most importantly, <laughs> um, Glenn McCracken. He's a friend. Um, and I don't know Glenn. Amy knows Glenn. I love Glenn. He is um, one of the most positive people. You know, we've had one other positive person that I felt that I talked about. Remember, um... I was going to say, everybody's been pretty positive. Oh, I know I mean, everybody's <laughs> positive, Jesus. But no, I'm just saying, like, he's a counselor. He you, kinda, owns... you put him on, like, the same level as Christina. Yes. Okay. Yes. Totally. Yeah. Um, a good person. Kind of like a mentor and a coach. Yes. And life he coach owns, kind of thing. He and his wife own a gym um, in town in Soma called Spark Fit. Um, it is great. I met Glenn... A while back, when he when Clubhouse Fitness first came to Little Rock, and that's where I met him. So I've known him for a long time, and um, he's just a really good trainer, a really good guy, and I'm real happy to introduce him to you. Well, I'm excited. I'm excited to meet him and uh, you know hear what he has to say. He's probably going to make a mocktail because I don't think he drinks. He's super healthy. Well, we pass no judgment on that. None. Like actually, I have a lot of respect for that. I know. Because, you know. Sometimes, sometimes we're like, I want to drink a mocktail, but my body is like, grab the cocktail. Seriously. <laughs> okay, let's meet Glenn. Let's do it. Cheers. <coughs> <laughs> And I'm doing great. How are you doing? Good. I want you to meet Emily. Hello, Glenn. Nice to meet you. What's up, Emily? <laughs> so are you um, 
making a, a drink? Does well, no, make, you know, I, you you know I don't, I don't actually drink. Uh, yeah. I've been, been sober for like, I don't know, four years or something like that. That's, That's awesome. Amazing. Yeah. Now I'm on, I'm on a pretty good streak. I, I did think about, uh, busting it for today. Um, for this, <laughs> we would not want you to do I that. I would not be responsible for that. <laughs> so, um, Glenn, I want to welcome you to conversations, cocktails and connections. Um, this is Glenn McCracken. And Glenn, tell us and tell Emily, because I've given her a little bit of um, what you do, but I want mm -hmm. to hear your, how you, you know, how you come out and tell what you do. Yeah, uh, thanks. So I'm, a, I'm credentialed as a therapist and a personal trainer. And uh, I think my objective is to help people be healthy, uh, just like mind, body, spirit. Uh, specifically like the way that they engage themselves. And then I also help people be like more content. Uh, so just like accept life on life's terms. Uh, and then my objective is to make people flourish. Uh, so not only uh, flourishing is like the ability to have a positive impact uh, on those around you. So, uh, so when yeah. I was telling Emily, when I was telling Emily about you, I was like, so he is one of those people that you want to be around that is a positive human that reflect, <laughs> I mean, that you just like, it just is your whole aura. <laughs> <laughs> like you, you are so good at being, um, such a good mentor as far as like, like train. I mean, I train with him. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm probably not the best at thinking about what I should be eating all the time and drinking. Hence, sorry, I, we did make cocktails <laughs> and I am going there in the morning, <laughs> but, um, anyway, I do feel like, and, and this is, I met you when wow. you, um, came to clubhouse when clubhouse first opened and I met you there. And even, even then I was like, I enjoy being around him because you could be in a bad mood mm -hmm. and you will still feel good about yourself when you leave. Oh. Do you do like, like one-on-one -on -one consults, like almost like life coaching type situations or, you know, how do, how do people interact with you beyond the, the physical kind of gym situation? Yeah. Uh, great question. So today I've been in this office, so I'm actually in my therapy office right now. The little thing there says like, be your best friend. And then, uh, you know, all therapists have to have like their books um, and so got all my books, but yeah, so I've had, <laughs> today I've had, uh, two couples, uh, I've had two couples that have come in, in person. I've had three teenagers, uh, two of them online. And then I've had, uh, two adults, one of them, uh, one of them going through a recovery process and then the other one experiencing, uh, what I would consider like body dysmorphia. Um, or not what I would consider, but what the DSM considers body dysmorphia. So uh, I'm like licensed with the state board, got my master's in uh, clinical mental health and interact with people that way. So today is a real clinical day for me. I would say any of the life coaching style work that I do is mostly going to be on the gym side. Um, and then we've kind of okay. packaged that differently. And so we interact. I think right now we have, um, we're influencing about a hundred and about 190 employees uh, through health and wellness and psychological wellness. And so there's elements of the coaching that's in that, but it's packaged in a scalable nature so that we can influence companies and employees. Your business, the gym part, I don't know if we actually said this out loud, is SparkFit. Yeah. Um, where did the name come from? Oh, man. Uh, so SparkFit, there's a book called Spark. And okay. it is about the way that these PE teachers in Indiana just revolutionized their school's educational system by putting, um, by putting like adolescents into PE either right before or right after their worst performing class. And the school itself was like lowest performing in the state. And now, um, even today, it's like one of the top 15 in in the world, math and science schools. 
And, uh, and so it was just about the way that exercise really impacts overall human functioning. Um, and so that's where like the word spark came from. And we had to put in fit because we wanted people to know that like, just kind of what we did. Um, there's like a spark energy drink out there. And so if you just like said that you were spark people and they still do show up and assume that we have spark, um, Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. <laughs> as an energy drink. So we love that name uh, mostly because it just communicates um, that we plan on being infectious uh, and starting with the body. I love that. Um, well, if, for my input on what, when you walk into his gym, um, it's not your typical, you don't have Stairmasters, you don't have... Um, treadmills and all of that stuff. It's mm -hmm. a small group training yeah. um, gym. Would you, is that what you would say it was? Yeah. Um, but there's so much there that things that you're like, what do I do? <laughs> but he, you are so, and um, so good at explaining and watching how your body moves. And when, when I personally, when I'm coming from just me, when I'm thinking of like, I'm doing something right. And you come over and you're like, okay, you need to do this. And you're like, Oh, I didn't know I was just doing that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think you're, even when you're in it, because when Amy and I are training together, when it's just the two of us or, or with Narcissa as well. But, um, when we're, when the other small groups and there's other people around, you're so good at being able to, and there's what, what do you think? Like six people at this at a time. So there's not very many people there. Right. Um, but you're, I swear he can be way over here and we're over here and he knows what we did. I'm like, okay, I can't <laughs> cheat on that counting because he knows. <laughs> but um, I mean, what do you think your biggest training, like what do you train the most in? Like, for body, I mean, are you just all over the board? I mean, are you doing kettlebells? Or are you doing um, Pilates? Or are you doing what do you what do you train the most in? Um, you know, I would I classify those things as like people showing up for either like muscle strengthening goals uh, or muscle lengthening goals, and a lot of people need a pretty good. I mean, everybody needs a balance of those things, and so it's usually just assessing what somebody's deficient in. Um, and so whether that's strength or length, uh, so flexibility, and then just getting clear about how to balance those exercises. And then the tools get selected mostly as a result of just looking at somebody's body and determining what tool is going to create the shape or the goal that, um, is, that they're saying that they're after. That's good. So how did you get into fitness? Oh man, great question. Um, it, it started, I mean, athletics, uh, to athletics is just like the big port, the big pusher of it. And so everything came from, uh, you know, competitive baseball, competitive basketball, um, football, those things were just like driven into me, even as a young kid soccer. I mean, like I played soccer as a kid in Europe for like three straight summers, uh, for like a little world Olympic team and then was on national baseball teams. And so like real competitive sports was just a part of my upbringing. And then when it came to exercise, I, that probably started happening as a result of injury. Um, and so just getting as a result of injury. And then the other problem with sports is that you always need so many other people to make the sport happen. And that became just a really, uh, that just is frustrating. I mean, like how many, when was the last time y'all were in a basketball game or when y'all were in a soccer game or when you even had like 10 friends that wanted to get together and like be that active, uh, it's just extremely difficult to do. And so, uh, fitness for me really started to kick off probably my junior year of high school. And I started competing in bodybuilding shows during that time, uh, waking up, running a five every day. Yeah, I was Mr. Teen Arkansas. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't even know there was such that. a thing. Yeah, uh, yeah, me either until I won it. Uh, and that was in <laughs> 2003. And, uh, and then that just led to uh, a bunch of other competitions throughout college. But that was like my intro to fitness. I had no idea that you could even make money in it until I was a cheerleader at the University of Arkansas. And I was 
at a gym and, uh, and the owner of the gym was like, Hey Glenn, this person wants to train with you. And I was like, well, I, I don't know what that means. I have a workout partner. And, <laughs> and, uh, and they were like, well, no, like they want to pay you. And then you tell them what to do. And I was like, I was like, oh my God, like, <laughs> sign were, me up, <laughs> blow my mind. <laughs> so, pay me all day. <laughs> right, man. I mean, it was definitely like that. I mean, I, I just had no idea that you could make money doing this. And uh, people always told me to just like do what I love and the rest will take care of itself. And it, it feels like that's the life that I live now. That's awesome. So where in Arkansas are you from? Uh, I'm from Conway. Uh, okay. Yeah, not so far. Not far at all. Uh, I've I've always loved Little Rock and wanted to like be in the capital city, and um, and so I, I thought that I would live in Fayetteville a little bit longer than what I did, but um, but I'm happy to be back, uh, Central Arkansas. As a counselor, you really want to go where people have like good memories of you. Um, and so you just get referrals a lot easier that way. Sure. And so that's proven to be very true. So has, has COVID affected your counseling business? Like what kind of needs are people having because of COVID? Oh man. Uh, yeah, COVID, the way that it's affected my counseling business has been a couple ways. I mean, from a business standpoint, I did zero telehealth appointments, uh, pre COVID and now I'm about 40% uh, telehealth. And wow. so that's one way. I would say the other way that it's affected is that like every conversation that is had with a client in some way has to, um, has to include the way that we're adapting to COVID. Social distancing, you know, just as people, um, the way that this interview is happening is just another great example of it. It's like, social distancing has just kind of driven us away from one another um, as a whole. And with my teens, I would say that parents are becoming a lot more aware of what their kids are doing. Mm -hmm. Like they're just like seeing them a lot and <laughs> the vice versa is there. The kids are seeing their parents a lot. And, you know, there's a lot of lost respect uh, that happens as a result of what some people do during their spare time. And, you know, those adolescents, they've got opinions uh, about what's good and what's not and what's right and what's wrong. And man, I hear it all. And so, um, there, and I, you know, I've definitely had, I've had a couple cases. I think my marital counseling has increased quite a bit too, just as a result of couples having to just like be together so much. And then also the reduction of like other couples coming into their lives and the energy that people feed off of that way. That's been other ways uh, that it's been affected. Man, I can totally see all of that. I've heard a lot of those kind of stories too. Yeah. You know, there's been, there's been some, some quarantine divorces and, you know, just quarantine babies, maybe quarantine babies, <laughs> like on both sides of it, or right? Quarantine puppies. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I, I, just on a mental thing of just the fact of like, just, you don't realize the affection we, we need affection, whether it's from your spouse or um, mm -hmm. from your friends. I mean, the hugging, the touching, yeah. not in a sexual way. I'm just saying like, yeah, yeah. I'm just like, oh, I want to I wanna give you a big hug. I miss that. I miss shaking people's hand. I miss all of the things. Yeah. And I know yeah. I can see how people that didn't do a lot of that before and, or didn't leave their house much. I mean, I can see how this could easily affect and make things so much worse by not leaving your house. And, um, I don't know. I mean, I know it's, I have a place to go my, my business, but if I would have to stay constantly and work all day with my spouse, it would be really, it would be hard. Yeah. I and mean, I know it's going to be that way for everybody. I've seen, you know, just another comment on that is that the house has become so many different things. Whereas before it was almost like a refuge. And now it's like the place where you work. It's the place where you work out. It's the place where you teach your kids. It's the place where, um, like everybody, everybody does everything. And so, and then like, that's just one person's perspective. And then you multiply that. And then you also pull your kids into that. And it's like the place where they practice baseball and the place where they practice this. And like, I mean, it's the home itself has actually been just so cross utilized during this time that 
it's just gets heavier as a result of the usage. There's more feelings in it. Yeah. I mean, what do you, that makes do sense. you have a lot of, um, young clients? I mean, do you have, do you counsel a lot of tweens? I, or not tweens? I see a lot of adolescents. Um, so today, yeah, today I've had like, I think I've affected nine total people. Um, and so that's seven or that's five and then two couples. And, um, of the five, one was 11, the other one was 15, the other one was 17. Okay. So, wow. Yeah. So without giving anything away of what, I mean, what are, what are on a perspective of an adolescent, like what are their troubles? I mean, what is a day-to-day -day trouble besides what I could probably guess by just watching yeah. TV or, you know, yeah, like why does a, an 11 year old or a 12 year old, you know, come in? Of course. Um, mostly environment. Um, and so there's something in their environment that has uh, created such stress in their own brain that they either don't think right, so they don't behave right, um, or they don't feel right and therefore don't think right and behave right. Um, and so that's like, I mean, that's, that's pretty much the gist of it for an 11 year old is that they're so impacted by their environment that, um, that any kind of like presentation to counseling is going to be mostly because it's like, well, we need to really help some parents here um, become more functioning. Um, the other, you know, I, I think that for teenagers, there's so much of just like self image. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. Like we all, I mean, I, I don't remember, I don't remember the day that I woke up and decided that I didn't like my body, but, um, but with my relationship with teenagers, I would say that it's definitely had to have been sometime around like 16 or 17, um, where you just someday you just like wake up and you're at war with the way that you look. And you're just like, my face is stupid. I got these zits like <laughs> my belly's this way. And like you just have all these bad thoughts about yourself. And so, um, self image, self concept, uh, and body positivity is probably some of the hottest topics that I work with kids on. And so uh, the parents are parents there, the kids aren't the one like, Oh, I need to talk to somebody. It's typically the parents are like, okay, this might help to talk to somebody. It depends. Uh, you know, kids, I would say that that was probably true for my generation of adolescents. Uh, but for the generation right now, I mean, I think mental health has become so normalized, uh, and feelings are actually celebrated a little bit more, uh, individualization, saying what you need to say, those things are becoming so, um, so normal that they're asking for therapists. And like, I would say in some schools, it's probably like a thing. It's like, who's your yeah. therapist? Um, <laughs> there's like a certain element of status. That's, that's so great. I mean, that's so healthy, right? It can be for sure. Um, <laughs> you, yeah. Did you depends. utilize correctly, I guess? Yeah. For, for the right reasons more so. Yeah. For the right reasons, uh, for the right reasons. And, you know, therapy is a business too. I mean, it's really easy for a therapist, um, to continue seeing a client, even though it's not necessary, um, just because that's like where they're getting their income. And so, you know, it, it's easy to just like, you can just keep picking people apart and identify problems in people until, you know, we're, we're always a work in progress. And so, yeah. I think that that's something that like I really try to do with my teenagers is like get a good stop sign and just be like, all right, like when we get here, we're stopping, uh, you know, and if you really want to re-engage again and like come back in three months, we'll see how much, you know, you want to re-engage. And uh, I've been doing counseling in Little Rock for, I guess it's now five years and uh, have seen kids go from uh, graduating high school to college and been able to like, they'll come back. Um, and just be like, oh man, like this is what's happening now. And telehealth has actually increased my kids that were in Fayetteville um, and like Louisiana, like going to school, different places. Wow. They've been like, oh, like now I can see Mr. Gwynn again. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> so that's which, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So. The accessibility I think is a is huge part of telehealth. I mean, I, I, I would think that that's a really great evolution of, of, the business. I mean, would you agree? Do you feel like you get the same kind of connection that you would if they were in person? Man, sometimes better. Um, it, it really depends on the presentation. Uh, you know, kids that are technology addicts, uh, which can be 
can be a lot. Um, those <laughs> ones, like, I mean, even right now, it's like, it's pretty easy for me to like be here on this screen and then do whatever on this device right back here. Um, yeah. like, pretend to be here and like so good at distracted attention that that can happen. And so there's some kids that like, you know, attention spans another big element, but I notice with a lot of the clients that present with depression, um, that this mode of therapy has actually been a little bit more effective, um, than, than not. I heard you talking about Olive and she has some nighttime monster situation. Oh yeah. Kind of scared. So I have something for you and I haven't brought it yet, but I'm going to, I have something to get for you to give to Olive. So I'll, I'll try to remember to bring it tomorrow. Can't wait. <laughs> but to tell me what, so she's like, thinks monsters are in her room or what is, what's going on? <laughs> Yeah. Um, and how does a therapist like talk her, <laughs> a counselor uh, talk her out of um, that one? I mean, I, you know, she, uh, kids just are so full of belief and imagination. Uh, it, it's really healthy for them. And we all believe things that are not true and scary, um, you know, and so I think that that's just kind of the, the commonality of it. And there's no convincing somebody that what's not true isn't true. They just have to keep experiencing it and be loved and supported uh, until it gets revealed to, to, to her. And so, uh, man, we just like, we go in there and we, we like beat up any monsters and we make sure <laughs> and like we check where they are and like we pull them out. And uh, we, <laughs> we've, We've tried to do things like uh, like dress things up as monsters and put them in places and then like physically like whoop them and like be like, see, it's not a monster anymore. And like, just really it's like, that's not the monster dad. That's yeah, so I mean, cute. We try to deconstruct the reality. Uh, and wow. so just as a, as a technique, but it, it just doesn't work. Um, <laughs> but it's fun. It makes you feel like you're doing something right as a parent when you're just like going above and beyond to, to absolve whatever fear, but she's been, five has been great for her. She's, uh, she's homeschooling uh, as long as, as with an, a whole bunch of other kids uh, right now. And I think just being at home and being with her mom so much, they're just the happiest that they've been in our five years of marriage or six years of marriage. Yeah. Well, um, so you traveled recently. Tell, so where, where did you go? You went to Colorado on a big hiking thing? Yeah. Um, yeah. I went to Colorado. One of my, one of my clients and friends, Daniel Felton, um, invited me to do some hiking, uh, for three days, hiking two days of pretty intense, like business planning. So we had a consultant come out there for the last two days and just kind of guide us through, uh, some strategizing and planning and the hikes were amazing. So we were in, uh, Oh man, why am I not? going to remember this place now winter park colorado okay. mm -hmm. uh, is where we were and so it was really great the way that it all kind of lined up we the big mountain that we hiked so the day one we hiked this place called devil's thumb and uh, devil's thumb ranch is actually where google does their corporate retreats and so the nice. space itself is like swanky uh, <laughs> there's like a resort out there uh, and they won't even let you pick up food unless you're staying there which is like uh, oh wow kind of rude but <laughs> uh but we hiked up to devil's thumb saw like a live elk from oh, like, wow. I mean, like within like 30 feet of our bodies um and so that was a little scary but uh, <laughs> but we hiked devil's thumb and then the next day we hiked saint james peak and uh, saint james is more like a thirteen thousand six hundred foot cliff the other one's like a twelve thousand foot um elevation climb and uh, it was really cool, just like spiritually too. i had been studying the book of James and I, I'm like interested in Jesus and like to the sense where like James is his brother. And I'm just thinking like, I have a brother. Do y'all have siblings? Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, could you imagine one of them claiming to be God's son? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, like it would just blow my mind uh, if my brother just started saying that. And so like, I really wanted to just like, understand James more and so start reading about James and like learning about just how he got how he gets on board uh with Jesus being the son of God and uh and anyway uh I'd been studying that for almost like three months and then got to go hike a peak that I didn't pick that was called James Peak and then like so it just felt like somewhat 
cool. And I would consider Daniel like a brother to me. Um, and so it was nice to like be there and be like, oh, like, I feel like that I'm supposed to believe in him in a way. Uh, <laughs> That's cool. That's awesome. Create that relationship. So, uh, well, did y'all have a guide or did you do this alone? Uh, no, I mean, it's a pretty common hike. Oh, it is? Okay. Uh, Daniel and his wife, they have a house out there. And so they, um, I, I'm, he'd done that hike, I think like eight years ago or something. Yeah. Well, you said something about business, y'all are strategizing business. What are you, what are you doing? Oh man. Um, so part of our, part of the corporate wellness work that has been occurring, um, has been like just a, it, it has occurred because Daniel and I have come into contact with each other and, uh, Arkansas doesn't have as a state, we don't even have a, any wellness company that exists here. Um, and so different, every company in Arkansas would, would contract corporate wellness from some outside of Arkansas company. And, um, so we wanted to get together and like, SparkFit has been a vendor for EngageMed for a while now and as a corporate wellness provider. And so we just wanted to, we just wanted to like give some time to really strategizing around how that could be impactful for the state of Arkansas and beyond. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 So great. Well, I love Daniel. He's such, he's such a good guy. Yeah. He's, oh man, he's like infectious too. He's just got yeah. that kind of energy and what I love about uh traveling with Daniel is like we wake up at like five in the morning uh we drink coffee and like we get after it and so like I just I like vacation I would not be me <laughs> that would be her yeah I would be into that yeah. yeah all right Emily's my active one yeah like I'm like a beach trip I'm like oh no like you mean we just lay there <laughs> awesome. yeah well, okay, Glenn, tell us and tell everybody listening how to contact you, what your social media handles are and all things. All you. the things. Yeah, you bet. So my, if you were trying to contact me, uh, you would do a good job at emailing me at Glenn, that's double N, G-L-E-N-N, -N, at sparkfitlr.com. Uh, if you're trying to book a session with me, you would want to email Levi at sparkfitlr.com. Levi is my virtual assistant and uh, it is just like the bomb when it comes to that. And then my, I'm on Instagram, man, I try to do a good job of posting. Uh, uh, man, I just, I wish I was better, uh, honestly. It's another uh, job. I it wish is. I had the desire to be better um, in that regard too, but it's Glenn underscore sparkfitlr. Um, on Instagram and then on Facebook, uh, I'm just my name on there. And uh, those are, that's all that I've got social media wise. And I, I don't even feel like that I crush it in that regard. <laughs> so many of my clients were just like, I wish you'd post more. Um, like, well, I feel like you've been doing a little bit more on the spark fit. Like you've been letting some trainers um, take over, which has yeah. been pretty good. Yeah. That's, we, that's easy content, right? it's very easy content and it gives them an opportunity to like, just kind of give clients insight to what's happening on their end. Uh, and that's been probably a, that's a difficult part of our business is that, you know, SparkFit is just like, that's one of four revenue streams for us. Uh, but it all happens under SparkFit. But like, if anyone asks, if you go to our website, you just are going to sign up for classes or inquire about training and like, you know, you're not going to go, you're not going to get to counseling that way. Uh, and you're also not going to get to corporate wellness that way. So um, some of those are just like growing pains for us where we've just outgrown our brand in a way. Yeah. And uh, we need to just rethink that. But, um, but COVID. <laughs> but COVID. But COVID. Yes. <laughs> I need a t-shirt that says, but COVID. I know. I know. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but COVID, yes. We should end it all at, until we can be face to face with people. But COVID. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Glenn. Well, thank you so much. And um, I'm glad you got to meet Emily. It was and, a pleasure to meet you. Really, really great. Uh, and I will see you in the morning. I'll see you in the morning. Hey, I do have one trivia question. Oh, you. okay. Ooh, okay. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so. Oh, my gosh. I'm so nervous. Which white wine grape variety is most widely planted in California? Is it, is it multiple, is it multiple choice? <laughs> <laughs> Which white wine grape variety is most widely planted in California? I'm going to go with Chardonnay. 
Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh my gosh, I was like so ready for you to give me like Wait, now a, I want another one. A, B, and okay. C. <laughs> All right, let me give you one more. One more. Okay, okay. Which, which dessert traditionally involves soaking sponge fingers in coffee and rum? Oh, um, is it the coffee? No, 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 it's um, uh, tiramisu. Yes. Yeah, it was the coffee. It has coffee, it's mocha. Yeah, 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 it does. Mm-hmm. I kind of knew, but I couldn't think of it. I thought oh. I would fail at all these. Now one another. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> Yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> the ideal cellar temperature for wine is nine degrees, 13 degrees, or 16 degrees Celsius. Oh. Ooh, I thought it was going to be like, I don't know. I'm going to go with Seven. 16. I don't know. I'm guessing. Yeah. Amy, Amy you put a guess in because she's wrong. Oh. At nine or 13. 13. Boom! Oh, I knew it! I knew it! I knew it from the beginning! Look, this is like, this is validation that y'all should definitely be doing a conversation. Uh, also, we need to understand the difference between Celsius and Fahrenheit. I know, because I, totally. Okay, thank you. I have I these. That. You're gonna I have, have these for you and actually a bunch of liquor so that the next one that you have, <laughs> The next thing that y'all have, you can put together the cocktail that I sent you via text message. Okay. Oh. All the liquor for it too. I thought. Oh. Uh, you get to make nice, that. Quinn. So, thank you so much. You're so oh sweet. yeah, man. I, I I'm really thankful for y'all. I want to support y'all doing whatever it is that you do, and so. Uh, thank you. you, bet. you bet. Okay. You're awesome. Thank you so much. It's great to thank meet you. you. Thank great you. Great to meet you. Bye. <laughs> Bye.